And we were in the trenches there, you see, when my friend Rob Roy, who was the cameraman there, right. you know, the bodies were strewn out. And, the, and there were all sorts of skeletons from previous bodies. And then we went into the, you know, into the uh, army headquarters area. Quite interesting bodies all over the place, hammer and sickles all over the place. And, uh, and from my point of view as a Canadian, found in the kitchens uh, gifts from CETA, uh, wheat flour for the refugees. For the, and the army had taken it all, Ethiopian army. And the same in, in alphabet in the town, on all the, the sorphids were selling cooking oil, wheat flour, that was, was for, for refugees. I was dead against foreign aid going into yeah. Ethiopia, because it went straight to the army. Okay. Canada has always denied this. But it was, uh, uh, you know, it, it really mm -hmm. very interesting from that aspect. And you know, we went, that's when we, we wanted to, uh, I wanted to then talk to some prisoners. Right. At that time, we didn't, we didn't know how big the thing, we knew it was a huge battle because there were, the roads were just strewn with dead and, and some of the bodies, like cartoon pancakes, you know, with trucks and tanks running over them. They're just flattened out and very hot, very dry. and. Uh, I was keen to, to talk to some mm -hmm. prisoners and kept asking the Eritreans, saying, look, if you got a prisoner, and they were very hesitant. The Eritreans. You know, the, the Eritreans were saying, well, yes, it's fine, we don't mind that, but uh, uh, just wait a while. And I couldn't understand, I, you know, all I wanted was three, four, five guys, right. <laughs> preferably officers who spoke English, right. you could ch chat with them. Yeah. So they finally said, well, we've done it, this is about the third day, and said, uh, if you drive to a certain spot uh, at about 4, 4.30 in the afternoon, we'll have your prisoners. And I immediately thought, oh, geez, you know, why didn't you just bring them here? Right. You know, go off to somewhere. Are they going to be real or they not? So we went there, and there's a bunch of people, you know, other people there. And then uh, I'd say, well, okay, who are the prisoners? And then, you know, I've never seen anything like it. Way down a little, half a mile, yeah. around a hill, yeah. came an absolute river of prisoners. Oh my goodness. There must have been 10,000. And, and there's another stream coming in. They, they got all the prisoners together. What they were afraid of, yeah. were doing it in the evening or, uh, when the sun was starting to go down a little, uh, they were afraid the Ethiopians would send aircraft over and shoot them up. And so you had this, we were standing there and, and yards away, when they come into all on bare feet, uh, all, <clears throat> you know, fairly healthy looking people, right. but uh, n a never ending stream of prisoners. So walked among them to see who spoke English, and, and you know a surprising number did. Right. A lot were officers were all together, and none of them really wanted to go back to Ethiopia. Wow. They were they they were they didn't want to be fighting the Eritreans. Eritreans were fighting hard. You know they they fought well, mm -hmm. uh, and they were afraid of what would happen to them. The Ethiopians were afraid. The Ethiopians were afraid of what happened if they went back. Yeah. And, uh, and apparently what had happened was the general commanding the Ethiopians at this great defeat was taken back and summarily executed, wow. you know, which he killed. And this wasn't a good thing for morale. Yeah. And, you know, the world was against Eritrea, yeah. no matter what they say. And uh, we'd go in to see refugee camps there and, and the uh, and the prisoners of war, the Red Cross would have nothing to do with the prisoners of war. Okay. You know, the Red Cross you would think would be independent, right. but it was for, uh, it 
which was on the Ethiopian side. And they wouldn't check on when, to how the, the Eritreans treated the prisoners. Well, the Eritreans, of course, it was in their interest to treat them well. Right. And because uh, none of those soldiers really wanted to go back, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. under the circumstances. So how did you find that, did you find that Eritreans treated the soldiers well? Especially in comparison to the Geneva Convention, would you say that Oh, I, the, well, standards? you see, I didn't think, uh, I think they complied with it. Uh, they didn't have to operate under it, and nobody was checking them. Mm -hmm. But they, I think it was in their interest to have uh, homeless children and uh, refugees mm -hmm. and the soldiers being treated well. Right. Uh, a far different uh, uh, way than they were treated by themselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, I found the, uh, uh, I found, you know, uh, even when I went back 10 years later, yeah. when things had changed, uh, there, was, there was a remarkable lack of corruption. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the ministers, when they, when they began to, when they formed the government and when they got the independence ceremonies in 93, uh, the ministers weren't driving Mercedes. Right. Yeah. They weren't living in lush offices. Uh, and this is when you went back in 1998? And this was at 1998. And uh, uh, you know, went into the disputed area at Badme, is it? Badme, Badme that area, yeah. Yeah. where it was happening. So you went there yes. at the time. What was your impression of the situation there? Well, it, uh, uh, nobody wanted the Ethiopians there. And for the life of me, had no understanding why the Ethiopians wanted it. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing there that that seems of value, uh, and it's hard to drive. There are no roads, yeah. all that, and the the people there were, were uh, wanted had no use for the Ethiopians. Uh, uh, and I suspect the Ethiopians had <laughs> soldiers didn't want to be in Badme. And then, but then the, the battle, the fighting shifted south of Asmara on the right. border there. Yeah. And, I, and I gather that the, uh, going down that, to that area, that the Ethiopians suffered a lot of casualties. 